If you want to build a new habit, you roughly speaking, there are kind of four things that you weren't working for you. There's some kind of cue, so that's the first step. There's something you notice. So for example, you're driving down the road and you hear a siren, and it's an ambulance. That starts the habit of pulling to the side of the road. So some kind of cue gets your attention. Then your brain interprets what that cue means. So I call that the craving. If you walk into the kitchen, see a plate of cookies on the counter, that's a visual cue. It starts the habit of eating a cookie. The next thing that happens is your brain predicts after it sees that cookie, oh, this will be sweet, sugary, tasty, enjoyable. Mm. And so it's actually that favorable meaning that gives you this craving or this urge, this desire to take action. And that leads you to the third step, which is the response, the actual habit that you perform. And then the fourth and final step is the reward. Oh, it is in fact sweet, sugary, tasty, enjoyable. This influences all of your habits and behaviors. It goes through the same basic cycle. For example, like your phone buzzing in your pocket. So your phone buzzes, that's the cue. The craving is, you know, if you haven't looked at the screen, you're like, oh, I wonder who that is, who's calling me or who's texting me. And so you have this kind of like urge to uh, open it up and check. You pull your phone open, you look at it. That's the actual habit that you perform. And then finally, you kind of like close the loop or you satisfy that craving that came beforehand. And now you're like, oh, I know who texted me or I know who called me or I know what the message is about. And so you get this sense of like relief or the satisfaction of the craving. And in that case, that's the reward. This type of pattern, it drives our habits and behaviors all throughout, you know, all day long. I love talking about this stuff and, you know, discussing the science, but what I really care about is can we make this actionable? Can I make this practical and apply it in my daily life and work? And if you want to build good habits, there are roughly speaking four things, four forces that you'd like to have working for you. So the first thing that you'd like to do is you want to make it obvious. You want the cues of your good habits to be obvious, available, visible, easy to see. Easier it is to see or get your attention, the more likely you are to act on it. Let's take a fitness ha habit, for example, like let's say you want to go for a run each day and make it obvious can be like environment design sort of things. So, for example, the night before you could set out your workout clothes and your shoes um, and set them right next to the bed so that they're right there for you. First thing when you wake up in the morning, it's obvious what you want to do. I even had a couple readers who would do something really wild where they'd like sleep in their workout clothes and then all they have to do is get out of bed and just tie their shoes and then they get started. The second thing is you want to make it attractive more attractive or appealing a habit is, the more motivating or enticing it is, the more excited you are to do it, the more you're going to feel this desire to take action. Make it attractive. There are a variety of ways to do this. I think the ultimate way to do it is to make friends with other people who are interested in doing the thing you want to do. Because if the people around you are performing the behavior, if your tribe is performing your desired behavior, it's going to be really attractive to you. The third step is you want to make it easy. The easier, more convenient, frictionless, simple a habit is, the more enjoyable it's going to be, the more likely you are to perform it. So in this case, maybe in the beginning, you scale your habit down. I like to recommend people use the two minute rule, which just says, take whatever habit you're trying to create and you scale it down to something that takes two minutes or less to do. So maybe it's just tie my running shoes, get out the door and run around the block. And that's a really small thing, but what you're trying to do in the beginning is you're trying to master the art of showing up. You're trying to become the type of person that goes for a run four days a week or whatever it is that you wanna do. And whether you do it for a minute or for 45 minutes, who cares? You're just trying to develop that identity. You're trying to reinforce the and master the art of showing up. And the fourth and final step is to make it satisfying. The more pleasurable or rewarding a habit is, the more satisfying it is, the more likely you are to return to it and repeat it in the future. One simple thing you can do here is use a habit tracker. So each day that you do your habit, you just put a little X on the calendar, you put an X on this tracker, and you can try to build up this streak of consistency. It visualizes your progress. And one of the challenges of building better habits is a lot of the time the returns are delayed. You know, like a lot of people feel like, man, I've been running for three weeks. I still can't see a change in my body. And that's easy for your motivation to kind of fade in that situation. And so something little, something simple, like a habit tracker that allows you to visualize your progress, that gives you at least a little bit of a reason to show up again on three weeks in one day. My hope is that one of the main things people can take away from Atomic Habits is that making small progress on a daily basis can become something much greater over time. but 
also, it's not just about the results that you get. It's also about the type of person that you're becoming. And a lot of the time when we're pitched the importance of results, you only see news stories about something once it becomes a result. You know, you're never going to see a news story that says, man eats chicken and salad for lunch today. You know, it's only a story once it's like, man loses 100 pounds. And so the results of life are highly visible and widely discussed. And the process is often invisible and hidden from view. And I think what I'm trying to get at is the importance of the process. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.